Sorry for my super nasally voice, and welcome to Sun God Productions. Now, for those of you who don't know, this war is not the one with the angry German mustache man who is actually Austrian. This is the one with the Kaiser. Now that I got that part clear, we can begin with the video. World War I is often considered the first modern war, and it's and really affected what went on later on in history. The Great War, as it was called at the time, was a multi-year war lasting from 1914 to 1918. It involved many countries, mostly in Europe, but there are others like Japan, who, which is in Asia. I don't know why you think that's in fucking Europe, but anyways. Um, and it killed 20 million people. And, um, yeah, that's kind of sad, but and what's something that's not sad is that it ended the age of imperialism, of most European imperialism, and yeah, that's a good thing, right? 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 More democracies? Anyways, you might be wondering, okay, what the hell was the root cause of the war? Well, in short, it was a little thing called nationalism. Now, you might be wondering, what the fuck is nationalism? And for that, buddy, it's basically an, I would say, an ideology. The, of an I, where like um a ethnic group has their own state, so like let's say for example like an for example um there are a bunch of Germans, at living in America, but they're neither hundred percent German, neither are they hundred percent American, so they revolt and create a German American ethno state. That's kind of what not nationalism is. I hope that gets me a good idea. I'm not a dictionary, okay? I'm not a fucking dictionary, but that's all I got for you. <laughs> anyways, um, yeah, sorry for the unfunny joke, but anyways, um, what empires rose from nationalism? Italy and Germany, but something that is really bad is that empires can also decline from nationalism, like the Ottoman Empire and Austria, which brings me to the 1914. Um, all right, so where to, where to begin, where to begin, where to begin. Um, all right, so one day in 1914, a motherfucker known as Gavrilo Princip shot, shot Archduke Franz Ferdinand and, and all in the name of Serbian nationalism. Now, Serbia at the time was a declining power, but it was still trying to expand into the Balkans. I know, genius idea, declining while expanding. Whoa. But anyways, Serbia happened to be a part of the Balkans, and Austria, and, and Serbia didn't like the idea of Austria-Hungary expanding into their, trying to expand into their territory, while, or like, you know, have more influence on them. So... Um, yeah, they just shot, shot Archduke Franz Ferdinand, and there's actually a really funny story. Well, it's not really funny, but whatever. And you can also, which it kind of, um, kind of makes my joke that I'm about to say make sense. So, um, the joke I'm about to say, I know I have to explain it, it's, then it's not really funny, but anyways, the joke I'm about to say is, um, yeah, bad driving caused World War One, and I'm going to explain why that is. Um, all right, so, um, in at the day that Archduke Franz Ferdinand got shot, he actually was um on a like um there's a failed assassination assassination attempt. God damn, I can't fucking talk. There's a failed assassination attempt. Attempt. Wow, really. There's a failed assassin assassination attempt. All right, I'm just gonna. There's a failed assassination attempt, and um, it act instead of hitting Archduke Franz Ferdinand, it hit one of his, the um, peep his guards. So, um, he was told to actually get out there and go to safety, like any reasonable Archduke Franz Ferdinand heir to the throne of Austria Hungary would do. But no, this guy decided to do the moral thing. Which is like, why the fuck would you be doing the moral thing? Um, so, and actually visit his, um, his guards who were shot in the hospital. So he, vi he visited, they weren't shot in the hospital, but like, he visited them when they were in the hospital. 
Um, and um, yeah, so then where's the bad driving come in? So when he was actually getting dri driven back to where he came from, his driver took a wrong turn and Gabriela Princip was like, oh yeah, this is my opportunity. And he just, bam, popped a cap in his ass. And yeah, that's how, that's basically how World War One started. So anyways, this is pretty bad for Austria that their heir to the throne died. And you know, this, and so Austria being a big bad bully decided to give an ultimatum to Serbia with 20 demands. Serbia accepted all but one. And because the reason why they didn't actually accept it was because it would infringe on their sovereignty, which I mean, that's a pretty good reason. But no, Austria was like, bitch, I'm let, just like, no, fuck you, Serbia. You killed my heir to the throne. I'm going to invade your ass. So that's how World War One started. Well, the initial conflict, at least. Anyways, at this point you must be wondering, okay, that's all good and dandy, but how the hell did this small regional conflict in the Balkans become a worldwide conflict? Well, the answer is, drumroll please, sorry I don't have a drum, um, the Russians, yeah I know, it's always the Russians. So, um, yeah, as soon as the Russians heard about the Austrians bullying their Slavic brothers because Serbia and Russia, uh, Russia are both Slavic countries. Uh, Russia's like, oh, hell no. Nah. And so they decided to help out their Slavic brothers. And, and Austria, being a bitch, decided to tell their sugar daddy, Germany, well, it's actually the German Empire, that to help them out. And Germany, being a good sugar daddy, and not wanting his little baby to be hurt, decided, you know what? I'm gonna help my bitch out, and he declared, and also, and so he declares war on Russia. Now, this isn't the Russia that we all know, and we all know for being tough. Actually, this Russia is pretty weak and pathetic, because they're actually in a, a transition from being an agricultural-based economy to be industrializing, and they're actually industrializing at a pretty fast rate, but. They still were nowhere near what they would be during World War II. Now, Germany had a pretty um, big rivalry with France, and France was like, you know what? I'm, I fucking hate you, Germany, because... Alright, let me explain why Germany and France hate each other. Because Germany um, war to unify... Have you ever heard of the Franco-Prussian War? Anyway, let me explain it real fast. The Franco-Prussian War was basically the last war in order for Prussia to unify Germany. And so, um, they decided, so basically what happened was that the Ger Prussians decided in order to get the South German states into the Austri and Prussian Prussians' influence away from Austria, they should have a war against France and ha and ask the Bavarians to fight with them and that way they can build brotherly comradeship and yeah and so then they just all unite and they'd also gain a small bit of France called Alsace and Lorraine I don't know the German pronunciation but I honestly think that should be the right pronunciation because fuck France anyway um, France also was an ally of Germ- uh, not Germany, they fucking hated Germany, they France was an ally of Russia, so, yeah, but France also had a sugar daddy, France's sugar daddy was Britain, and, well, the British Empire, and the British Empire was actually the world power, and controlled a quarter of the globe, so, yeah, Germany, good luck with that guy, um, but, anyways, <laughs> Um, but Britain decided not to be a good sugar daddy like Germany and and not be a simp like Germany because Germany is simping for Austria um, but Britain isn't so Britain decided not to be a simp and said here look France if Germany invades neutral Belgium 
then yes, I will join your side. And guess what Germany decided to do? No, really, guess. Alright, they decided to invade neutral Belgium. And so, you might be wondering, why did they want to invade neutral Belgium? Well, I'll explain that in the next video, because this video is already 10 minutes long. So, yeah, bye, remember to subscribe, and if you don't, um, go to the Gulag. Peace.